Hello and welcome to the Strange Tales podcast presented by me your host Winston R. Douglas. We are a podcast that looks a weird and wonderful tales from history, true crime, conspiracies and much more. I will try to cover various topics from different eras hopefully we can take a journey through history together. If you are a first time listener please look back on our previous episodes, if you are a returning listener thank you for your continual support. If you enjoy the podcast please smash that gorgeous like button, and subscribe so that you will be notified to future shows. Also if you could write a 5 star review that would really help us get the word out, so other people can enjoy the podcast as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Strange Tales Pod. Or you can message me at strangetalespod at gmail.com, with feedback or ideas on future shows. If you would like to support the podcast you can do so through Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash strangetalespod. Where we have plans from as little as 3 US dollars a month and you can opt out any time. Any help is much appreciated. This week we will take a look into the rock supergroup Fleetwood Mac who were formed in London 1967. They were founded by guitarist Peter Green, drummer Mick Fleetwood and guitarist Jeremy Spencer, before bassist John McVie joined the lineup for their self-titled debut album. Fleetwood Mac have sold more than 120 million records worldwide, making them one of the world's best-selling bands. In 1998 the band were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and received the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to Music. OK let's get into today's strange tale. Buckingham convinced Fleetwood to let his work on their next album be more experimental, and to be allowed to work on tracks at home before bringing them to the rest of the band in the studio. The result of this, the band's 12th studio album Tusk, was a 20-track double album released in 1979. It produced three hit singles, Buckingham's Tusk, U.S. No. 8, which featured the USC Trojan marching band, Christine McVie's Think About Me, U.S. No. 20, and Nix's six-and-a-half-minute opus Sarah, U.S. No. 7. Sarah was cut to four-and-a-half minutes for both the hit single and the first CD release of the album, but the unedited version has since been restored on the 1988 Greatest Hits compilation, the 2004 reissue of Tusk and Fleetwood Mac's 2002 release of the very best of Fleetwood Mac. Original guitarist Peter Green also took part in the sessions of Tusk although his playing, on the Christine McVie track Brown Eyes, is not credited on the album. In an interview in 2019 Fleetwood described Tusk as his personal favorite and said, Kudos to Lindsay, for us not doing a replica of rumors. Tusk sold 4 million copies worldwide. Fleetwood blamed the album's relative lack of commercial success on the RKO radio chain having played the album in its entirety prior to release, thereby allowing mass home taping. The band embarked on an 11-month tour to support and promote Tusk. They traveled across the world, including the US, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, France, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. In Germany, they shared the bill with reggae superstar Bob Marley. On this world tour, the band recorded music for their first live album, which was released at the end of 1980. The band's 13th studio album, Mirage, was released in 1982. Following 1981 solo albums by Nix, Belladonna, Fleetwood, The Visitor, and Buckingham, Law and Order, there was a return to a more conventional approach. Buckingham had been chided by critics, fellow band members and music business managers for the lesser commercial success of Tusk. Recorded at Chateau de Rouville in France and produced by Richard Dashut, Mirage was an attempt to recapture the huge success of Rumours. Its hits included Christine McVie's Hold Me and Love in Store, co-written by Robbie Patton and Jim Recor, respectively, Nixie's Gypsy, and Buckingham's O Diane, which made the top ten in the UK. A minor hit was also scored by Buckingham's Eyes of the World and Can't Go Back. Following Mirage the band went on hiatus, 
which allowed members to pursue solo careers. Nix released two more solo albums, 1983's The Wild Heart and 1985's Rock a Little. Buckingham issued Go Insane in 1984, the same year that Christine McVie made an eponymous album, yielding the top 10 hit Got a Hold on Me and the top 40 hit Love Will Show Us How. All three met with success, Nix being the most popular. During this period Fleetwood had filed for bankruptcy, Nix was admitted to the Betty Ford Clinic for addiction problems and John McVie had suffered an addiction-related seizure, all of which were attributed to the lifestyle of excess afforded to them by their worldwide success. It was rumored that Fleetwood Mac had disbanded, but Buckingham commented that he was unhappy to allow Mirage to remain as the band's last effort. The rumors lineup of Fleetwood Mac recorded one more album, their 14th studio album, Tango in the Night, in 1987. As with various other Fleetwood Mac albums, the material started off as a Buckingham solo album, before becoming a group project. The album went on to become their best-selling release since rumors, especially in the UK where it hit no. One three times in the following year. The album sold three million copies in the US and contained four hits, Christine McVie's Little Lies and Everywhere, Little Lies being co-written with McVie's new husband Eddie King Taylor, Sandy Stewart and Nix's Seven Wonders, and Buckingham's Big Love. Family Man, Buckingham and Richard Dashut, and Isn't It Midnight, Christine McVie, were also released as singles, with less success. With a ten-week tour scheduled, Buckingham held back at the last minute, saying he felt his creativity was being stifled. A group meeting at Christine McVie's house on 7 August 1987 resulted in turmoil. Tensions were coming to a head. Fleetwood said in his autobiography that there was a physical altercation between Buckingham and Nix. Buckingham left the band the following day. After Buckingham's departure Fleetwood Mac added two new guitarists to the band, Billy Burnett and Rick Vito, again without auditions. Capitalizing on the success of Tango in the Night, the band released a Greatest Hits album in 1988. It featured singles from the 1975 to 1988 era, and included two new compositions. No Questions Asked written by Nix and As Long As You Follow, written by Christine McVie and Keen Taylor. As Long As You Follow was released as a single in 1988 but only made no. 43 in the US and number 66 in the UK, although it reached number one on the US adult contemporary charts. The Greatest Hits album, which peaked at no. 3 in the UK and no. 14 in the US was dedicated by the band to Buckingham, with whom they were now reconciled. In 1990, Fleetwood Mac released their 15th studio album, Behind the Mask. With this album the band veered away from the stylized sound that Buckingham had evolved during his tenure in the band and developed a more adult contemporary style with producer Greg Ladenyi. The album yielded only one top 40 hit, Christine McVie's Save Me. Behind the Mask only achieved gold album status in the US, peaking at no. 18 on the Billboard album chart, though it entered the UK albums chart at no. 1. It received mixed reviews and was seen by some music critics as a low point for the band in the absence of Buckingham. But Rolling Stone magazine said that Vito and Burnett were the best thing to ever happen to Fleetwood Mac. The subsequent Behind the Mask tour saw the band play sold-out shows at London's Wembley Stadium. In the final show in Los Angeles, Buckingham joined the band on stage. The two women of the band, McVie and Nix, had decided that the tour would be their last, although both stated that they would still record with the band. In 1991, however, Nix and Rick Vito left Fleetwood Mac altogether. In 1992, Fleetwood arranged a four-disc box set, spanning highlights from the band's 25-year history, entitled 25 Years, The Chain. A notable inclusion in the box set was Silver Springs, a Nix composition that was recorded during the Rumours sessions but was omitted from the album and used as the B-side of Go Your Own Way. 
Nix had requested use of this track for her 1991 Best of Compilation Time Space, but Fleetwood had refused as he had planned to include it in this collection as a rarity. The disagreement between Nix and Fleetwood garnered press coverage and was believed to have been the main reason for Nix leaving the band in 1991. The box set also included a new Nix slash Rick Vito composition, Paper Doll, which was released in the US as a single and produced by Buckingham and Richard Dashut. There were also two new Christine McVie compositions, Heart of Stone and Love Shines. Love Shines was released as a single in the UK and elsewhere. Buckingham also contributed a new song, Make Me a Mask. Fleetwood also released a deluxe hardcover companion book to coincide with the release of the box set, titled My 25 Years in Fleetwood Mac. The volume featured notes written by Fleetwood detailing the band's 25-year history and many rare photographs. The Buckingham slash Nick slash MC Vi slash MC Vi slash Fleetwood lineup reunited in 1993 at the request of US President Bill Clinton for his first inaugural ball. Clinton had made Fleetwood Max Don't Stop His Campaign theme song. His request for it to be performed at the inauguration ball was met with enthusiasm by the band, although this lineup had no intention of reuniting again. Inspired by the new interest in the band, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, and Christine McVie recorded another album as Fleetwood Mac, with Billy Burnett taking lead guitar duties. Burnett left in March 1993 to record a country album and pursue an acting career and Becca Bramlett, who had worked a year earlier with Fleetwood Zoo, was recruited to take his place. Solo singer-songwriter-slash-guitarist and traffic member Dave Mason, who had worked with Becca's parents Delaney and Bonnie 25 years earlier, was subsequently added. In March 1994 Billy Burnett, a good friend and co-songwriter with Delaney Bramlett, returned to the band with Fleetwood's blessing. The band, minus Christine McVie, toured in 1994, opening for Crosby, Stills, and Nash and in 1995 as part of a package with REO Speedwagon, and Pat Benatar. This tour saw the band perform classic Fleetwood Mac songs from their 1967 to 1974 era. In 1995, at a concert in Tokyo, the band was greeted by former member Jeremy Spencer, who performed a few songs with them. On 10 October 1995, Fleetwood Mac released their 16th studio album, Time, which was not a success. Although it hit the UK top 60 for one week, the album had zero impact in the US. It failed to graze the Billboard Top 200 Albums chart, a reversal for a band that had been a mainstay on that chart for most of the previous two decades. Shortly after the album's release, Christine McVie informed the band that the album would be her last. Bramlett and Burnett subsequently formed a country music duo, Becca and Billy. The regrouped Fleetwood Mac performed a live concert on a soundstage at Warner Brothers Burbank, California, on the 22nd of May 1997. The concert was recorded, and from this performance came the 1997 live album The Dance, which brought the band back to the top of the US album charts for the first time in 10 years. The Dance returned Fleetwood Mac to a superstar status they had not enjoyed since Tango in the Night. The album was certified 5 million units by the RIA. An arena tour followed the MTV premiere of The Dance and kept the reunited Fleetwood Mac on the road throughout much of 1997, the 20th anniversary of Rumours. With additional musicians Neil Haywood on guitar, Brett Tuggle on keyboards, Lenny Castro on percussion and Sharon Chilani and Mindy Stein on backing vocals, this would be the final appearance of the classic lineup including Christine McVie for 16 years. Neil Haywood and Sharon Chilani remain touring members to this day. In 1998 Fleetwood Mac were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Members inducted included the original band, Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, Peter Green, Jeremy Spencer, and Danny Kerwin, and Rumors era members Christine McVie, Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham. Bob Welch was not included, despite his key role in keeping the band alive during the early 1970s. 
The Rumors era version of the band performed both at the induction ceremony and at the Grammy Awards program that year. Peter Green attended the induction ceremony but did not perform with his former bandmates, opting instead to perform his composition. Black Magic Woman with Santana, who were inducted the same night. Neither Jeremy Spencer nor Danny Kerwin attended. Fleetwood Mac also received the Outstanding Contribution to Music Award at the Brit Awards, British Phonographic Industry Awards, the same year. In 1998 Christine McVie left the band. Her departure left Buckingham and Nicks to sing all the lead vocals for the band's 17th album, Say You Will, released in 2003, although Christine contributed some backing vocals and keyboards. The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 chart, no. 6 in the UK, and yielded chart hits with Peacekeeper and the title track, and a successful World Arena tour which lasted through 2004. The tour grossed $27,711,129 and was ranked no. 21 in the top 25 grossing tours of 2004. In interviews given in November 2006 to support his solo album Under the Skin, Buckingham stated that plans for the band to reunite once more for a 2008 tour were still on the cards. Recording plans had been put on hold for the foreseeable future. In an interview Nix gave to the UK newspaper The Daily Telegraph I in September 2007, she stated that she was unwilling Fleetwood Mac in St. Paul, Minnesota in 2009. In March 2009, Fleetwood Mac started their Unleashed tour, again without Christine McVie. It was a greatest hits show, although album tracks, such as Storms and I Know I'm Not Wrong were also played. During their show on 20 June 2009 in New Orleans, Louisiana, Stevie Nicks premiered part of a new song that she had written about Hurricane Katrina. The song was later released as New Orleans on Nix's 2011 album In Your Dreams with Mick Fleetwood on drums. In October 2009 and November the band toured Europe, followed by Australia, and New Zealand in December. In October, the very best of Fleetwood Mac was re-released in an extended two-disc format, this format having been released in the US in 2002. Entering at number 6 on the UK Albums Chart. On the 1st of November 2009 a one-hour documentary, Fleetwood Mac, Don't Stop, was broadcast in the UK on BBC One, featuring recent interviews with all four current band members. During the documentary Nix gave a candid summary of the current state of her relationship with Buckingham, saying maybe when we're 75 and Fleetwood Mac is a distant memory, we might be friends. On 6 November 2009, Fleetwood Mac played the last show of the European leg of their Unleashed tour at London's Wembley Arena. Christine McVie was present in the audience. Nix paid tribute to her from the stage to a standing ovation from the audience, saying that she thought about her former bandmate every day, and dedicated that night's performance of Landslide to her. On 19 December 2009 Fleetwood Mac played the second-to-last show of their Unleashed tour to a sell-out crowd in New Zealand, at what was originally intended to be a one-off event at the TSB Bowl of Brooklands in New Plymouth. Tickets, after pre-sales, sold out within 12 minutes of public release. Another date, Sunday 20 December, was added and also sold out. The tour grossed $84,900,000 and was ranked no. 13 in the highest grossing worldwide tours of 2009. On 19 October 2010, Fleetwood Mac played a private show at the Phoenician Hotel in Scottsdale, Arizona for TPG, Texas Pacific Group. Original Fleetwood Mac bassist Bob Brunning died 18 October 2011 at the age of 68. Former guitarist and singer Bob Weston was found dead on 3 January 2012 at the age of 64. Former singer and guitarist Bob Welch was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on 7 June 2012 at the age of 66. Don Aaron, a spokesman at the scene, stated, 
he died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. A suicide note was found. Welch had been struggling with health issues and was dealing with depression. His wife discovered his body. The band's 2013 tour, which took place in 34 cities, started the 4th of April in Columbus, O. Oh. The band performed two new songs, which Buckingham described as some of the most Fleetwood Mac A sounding songs since Mirage. Without You was re recorded from the Buckingham Knicks era. The band released their first new studio material in 10 years, Extended Play, on 30 April 2013. The EP debuted and peaked at No. 48 in the US and produced one single, Sad Angel. 25 and 27 September 2013, the second and third nights of the band's London O2 shows, Christine McCree joined them on stage for Don't Stop. On 27 October 2013, the band cancelled their New Zealand and Australian performances after John McCree had been diagnosed with cancer, so that he could undergo treatment. They said, we are sorry not to be able to play these Australian and New Zealand dates. We hope our Australian and New Zealand fans as well as Fleetwood Mac fans everywhere will join us in wishing John and his family all the best. Also in October 2013, Stevie Nicks appeared in American Horror Story, Coven with Fleetwood Mac's song Seven Wonders playing in the background. In November 2013, Christine McVie expressed interest in a return to Fleetwood Mac, and also affirmed that John McVie's prognosis was really good. 2014 present, return of McVie, and departure of Buckingham. On the 11th of January 2014, Mick Fleetwood confirmed that Christine McVie would be rejoining Fleetwood Mac. On with the show, a 33-city North American tour, opened in Minneapolis, Minnesota, on 30 September 2014. A series of May to June 2015 arena dates in the United Kingdom went on sale on 14 November, selling out in minutes. Due to high demand, additional dates were added to the tour, including an Australian leg. In January 2015, Buckingham suggested that the new album and tour might be Fleetwood Mac's last, and that the band would cease operations in 2015 or soon afterwards. He concluded, we're going to continue working on the new album and the solo stuff will take a back seat for a year or two. A beautiful way to wrap up this last act. But Mick Fleetwood stated that the new album might take a few years to complete and that they were waiting for contributions from Nix, who had been ambivalent about committing to a new record. In August 2016, Fleetwood revealed that while the band had a huge amount of recorded music, Virtually none of it featured Nicks. Buckingham and Christine McVie, however, had contributed multiple songs to the new project. Fleetwood told Ultimate Classic Rock, she, McVie, wrote up a storm, she and Lindsay could probably have a mighty strong duet album if they want. In truth, I hope it will come to more than that. There really are dozens of songs. And they're really good. So we'll see. Nix explained her reluctance to record another album with Fleetwood Mac. Is it possible that Fleetwood Mac might do another record? I can never tell you yes or no, because I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's like, do you want to take a chance of going in and setting up in a room for like a year, to record an album, and having a bunch of arguing people? And then not wanting to go on tour because you just spent a year arguing? She also emphasized that people do not buy as many records as they used to. On the 9th of June 2017, Buckingham and Christine McVie released a new album, titled Lindsay Buckingham slash Christine McVie, which included contributions from Mick Fleetwood and John McVie. The album was preceded by the single In My World. A 38-date tour began on the 21st of June and concluded the 16th of November. Fleetwood Mac also planned to embark on another tour in 2018. The band received the Music Airs Person of the Year Award in 2018 and reunited to perform several songs at the Grammy-hosted gala honoring them. Artists including Lord, 
Harry Styles, Little Big Town and Miley Cyrus also performed. In April 2018, the song Dreams re-entered the Hot Rock Songs chart at No. 16 after a viral meme had featured the song. This chart re-entry came 40 years after the song had topped the Hot 100. The song's streaming totals also translated into 7,000 equivalent album units, a jump of 12%, which helped rumors to go from No. 21 to No. 13 on the Top Rock Albums chart. That month Buckingham departed from the group a second time, having reportedly been dismissed. The reason was said to have been a disagreement about the nature of the tour, and in particular the question of whether newer or less well-known material would be included, as Buckingham wanted. Mick Fleetwood and the band appeared on CBS this morning on 25 April 2018 and said that Buckingham would not sign off on a tour that the group had been planning for a year and a half and they had reached a huge impasse and hit a brick wall. When asked if Buckingham had been fired, he said, well, we don't use that word because I think it's ugly. He also said that Lindsay has huge amounts of respect and kudos to what he's done within the ranks of Fleetwood Mac and always will. In October 2018, Buckingham filed a lawsuit against Fleetwood Mac for breach of fiduciary duty, breach of oral contract and intentional interference with prospective economic advantage, among other charges. He stated that they eventually came to a settlement, which he would not share the terms of, but claimed he was happy enough with it. Former Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers guitarist Mike Campbell and Neil Finn of Crowded House were named to replace Buckingham. On CBS This Morning, Fleetwood said that Fleetwood Mac had been reborn and that this is the new lineup of Fleetwood Mac. Aside from touring, the band plans to record new music with Campbell and Finn in the future. The band's An Evening with Fleetwood Mac tour started in October 2018. The band launched the tour at the iHeartRadio Music Festival on 21 September 2018 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, NV. Thank you all so much for listening. I really hope that you enjoyed today's strange tale. If you did please smash that gorgeous like button, and subscribe so that you will be notified to future shows. Also if you could write a 5 star review that would really help us get the word out, so other people can enjoy the podcast as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Strange Tales Pod. Or you can message me at strangetalespod at gmail.com, with feedback or ideas on future shows. If you would like to support the podcast you can do so through Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash strangetalespod. Where we have plans from as little as 3 US dollars a month and you can opt out any time. Any help is much appreciated. This is me your host Winston R. Douglas signing out for now. Thanks again hope to see you again soon.